about serving strategies. I think that one of the biggest ways that we can impact our, our team winning matches is with our serving strategies and with our serving emphasis to our players. I think there's a lot of things that happen in a volleyball game, but serving scores points. They're the direct reason we score points. They're the direct way to put pressure on another team. And I think as coaches, we really need to manage that situation well to put our team in the best position possible. But can we as a coach maximize our team's point scoring percentage by making the best decisions to get the most out of each server? I think a lot of coaches need to take an assessment of their team and maybe one player would serve better and score more points serving on their own. Another player is really good with a short serve. Another serve can serve zone five very effectively. Another server might be scared to death to serve zone five. Well, we as coaches need to know that so that we can put our team in the best position to score. We may have a dominant jump server that looks very impressive. But maybe she really doesn't score that many points. Her jump serve looks good, but it doesn't score very many points. The team did a study on their top jump servers, and they found out that their top jump servers that look very dominating and impressive weren't scoring nearly as effectively as when they used a jump floater. So they changed their top jump servers into jump float serves, and then their point scoring effectiveness went up significantly. But the only way they did that is by having the numbers of points per rotation served and then making a great decision for their team. Do we serve a weak passer on the other team? That's an interesting decision because sometimes our players will serve a weak passer, but they serve an easy serve to the weak passer, and then all of a sudden the weak passer becomes a good passer because our team is trying to please the coach and they just put it into the weak passer. That's sometimes a dilemma for a player because they want to serve the right player, but in order to serve the right player, they might serve a 70% serve just to serve the right player, which then in effect doesn't put pressure on the weaker passer. So that's something as a coach we have to manage. Do we serve the best hitter or the best player on the other team? Sometimes as a coach, if we put pressure on the best hitter or we put pressure on the best player and we do the thing of trying to break the best player on the other team, does that give our team confidence? Does it deplete the confidence of the other team? I think there's some ways that we can gain an emotional edge by using a serving plan in the right way. And sometimes going after the other team's best hitter and their other team's best player is often a way to break the spirit of the other team, plus give our team confidence that we're able to be better than the better player on the other side of the net. Do we adjust our serving strategy match to match? Some coaches have the same st serving strategy every match. Some coaches will say, we play on Friday night, we play this team, we're going to use this serving strategy. Now we play a team on Saturday night, we're going to use a different serving strategy. Are the players ready for two different serving strategies? Or does that coach have one serving philosophy for their entire team and they manage that way and that's the strength or is the strength of a coach the ability to have their team serve different ways, different nights depending on which team they're playing and I think both have their advantages. But I certainly think that serving strategies is one of the most impactful ways that a coach can influence winning or losing with a team in a match.